You'll have to forgive the voice, um, I've got a bit of a cold, so if my voice sounds husky, then that's why, but we will power through this. What is terraforming? Terraforming is the process of transforming a hostile environment, usually another planet or moon, into one suitable for human life. Why would we terraform? We've only got the one planet, and despite what we may think, our existence is incredibly fragile. As a species, we've only been around for about 200,000 years, and only for a fraction of that time have we been anywhere near as powerful as we are now. The dinosaurs roamed the Earth for 165 million years, and what wiped them out happened like that, and could just as easily happen to us tomorrow. Also, there's the overpopulation problem. At some point in your life, you've probably seen this graph. Okay, Billy, what are you... That's not... Okay, that's not how you graph. What are you... Look at... That's going in the wrong direction. Why? It goes, it goes the other way, okay? This shows the growth of the human population over several thousand years. This sudden increase is around the Industrial Revolution. We only hit the 1 billion milestone around the early 1800s, and just over 200 years later, we're already over 7 billion people. Finally, along with all the natural disasters that could wipe us out, we could also kill ourselves through uh, a nuclear war, or inventing Skynet or developing a super virus that kills us all. Hello! Where would we terraform? In this video I'll be looking at how we could terraform Mars, but there are other options like Venus or Titan, which I might look at in the future. What is Mars like as a planet? Mars is the fourth rock from the Sun, with a diameter just over half that of Earth's and gravity 38% of Earth's. A Martian day is 24 and a half hours long, and the Martian year is 687 days long. Mars has an axial tilt of 25.2 degrees compared to Earth's 23.4 degrees, meaning that, like Earth, Mars has seasons. It's also likely that water exists frozen beneath the ice caps of Mars and scattered beneath the surface, and possibly in deep underground aquifers. However, Mars has its issues. The mean temperature on Mars is minus 60 degrees Celsius, or 213 degrees Kelvin. The Martian atmosphere is really thin and almost entirely composed of carbon dioxide, and the planet has no magnetosphere. This is a problem, as a magnetosphere would protect Mars's atmosphere from cosmic particles and rays that would otherwise strip it away. Mars's core ceased being active billions of years ago, which means the dynamo, the way the core generates a magnetic field, is kaput. Gases pumped into the skies of Mars would gradually erode away, meaning that either we continually maintain the atmosphere or we restart the planet's dynamo. Now, terraforming is one thing, but reactivating a planet's core? Even I find that a bit far-fetched, so let's just say that atmospheric maintenance is just a regular job on Mars. How would we terraform? Firstly, we'd undertake a step called ecopoesis, which is the creation of a habitable ecosystem for even the most hardy extremophile bacteria. To reach this state, we need to do four things. Increase the temperature and raise the atmospheric pressure of Mars, get liquid water flowing on the surface, and decrease the amount of UV and just cosmic radiation that reaches the surface of Mars. Carbon dioxide is locked up in the Martian soil known as regolith and as dry ice in the south polar cap. In both cases, it could be released through outgassing, which would lead to a positive feedback loop as the CO2 increased the temperature, more CO2 outgassed, more CO2 until it reached an equilibrium. Once the outgassing is complete, Mars should have warmed to around the melting point of water, which is 0 degrees Celsius or 273 degrees Kelvin. There's water flowing on the surface, there'll be loads of water coming from melting the polar caps, and there'll be even more if there are deep underground aquifers, which seems likely considering the vast amounts of water required to carve the famous canals of Mars. Radiation is reduced either by the production of ozone, which would happen naturally between oxygen molecules and UV radiation in the atmosphere, or by pumping small amounts of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, which would also help warm the planet. Basic plants and bacteria could survive on Mars in an atmosphere composed almost entirely of carbon dioxide, with only small amounts of nitrogen and oxygen. Once they are alive on the surface, they will take in carbon dioxide and release more nitrogen and oxygen, and that's even if they're not genetically engineered to reproduce faster and be more efficient at doing this than they already are, which they probably will be. They'd spread across the planet, change the atmosphere for the better, and meanwhile we'd be helping them along. We'd build tented towns and cities, and eventually civilizations would emerge. There'd be water flowing on the surface, and one day, Mars would be terraformed, and we'd be able to walk on it without wearing any spacesuits. When would we terraform? Whenever we wanted. We could start today, but instead we're stuck debating minor issues instead of thinking about the future of our species. And that's the end of the video. I really want to know what you think about this. As for how long it will take, I honestly don't know. It could take thousands or millions of years. But if we invested billions and billions of monies into it, maybe if it became a priority, then we could probably get it done in a few hundred years. Bye!